would like to thank our sponsors, Ocean Stone Architectural Lighting. Fully customizable trap lighting systems for your home, all controlled by an app on your phone. From individual lights to full color spectrum of lights, it's easy to use. You can set timers for special events or seasonal lighting. And what I find really cool are the preset patterns and animation. To get a free quote for your home, go to OceanStoneLighting.com. Welcome to the Quick Tap Rugby Outlier Podcast. I'm Nate Augsburger. I'm CJ. I'm Chef Rock. The podcast that brings you an elite perspective into MLR rugby. Well, welcome to another episode of Quick Tap Rugby Outlier Podcast. I'm your host, CJ. Before we get started today, because everybody's practicing uh, social distancing, I want to say a very uh, deep sympathy to Carlton Towns, whose mother's passed away today. Um, you know, one of our, one of our famous hosts, co-host is from Minnesota and um, so I know he may have a special moment you want to say about that but um, they get back to the show and I uh, hope everybody's safe but um, practicing social distancing social distancing today is uh, the great Nate Osberger one of if not the best scrum half in the MLR hey. is he is USA, USA Eagle in both 17s and 15s and he's a San Diego Legionnaire so wait welcome Welcome, Nate Osberger. Nate. Thank you. Thank you. you. Doing, buddy? Appreciate it. Yeah, good to see you guys, man. Right Excited. on. Right on. Practice, also practicing social distancing. We're trying to make sure that we keep him far, far away from us. Is the celebrity chef, host of the Chef Rock and Television <laughs> Series, launching soon on the Roku channel and Amazon Prime. A sports yeah, enthusiast, baby. sports nut, and a rugby newbie. As celebrity Thank chef, you. Chef Rock. What's How up, Chef doing? Rock, baby? How you doing, it's good to man? be with you guys. Can't wait for when we're all together. I, I feel like I feel like there was like, who could it be now? <laughs> <laughs> when Chef Rock was getting <laughs> us there. I don't know. That should, that should yeah, be your opening yeah. theme song. Yeah, if have, I had uh, hair, I'd be shaking it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please put that hat back on, please. Thank you, brother. Hey, I got a good guy. You know what I'm saying? I got a chrome dome hey, like so, you. So how, hey, hey, hey. You don't know what's under, you don't know what's under here, bro. Oh, like <laughs> hey, listen, so, so how you guys been, man? How you been doing, Nate, in this, uh, this time of, uh, you know, s- privacy and solitude and quarantine? It's all good. It's all good. I've been finding ways to move forward. Uh, I'll describe my morning went a little bit like uh, I drive a couple blocks away, and I got a bunch of stuff in the trunk of my car, and I just ran sprints, sprints in the wow. street. So I did 16 oh, sprints. 16 sprints total, um, 12 of them were kind of like uphill. So I had a little, little bit of an incline, not like a high degree, but a little bit of an incline working on my nice. speed. And then um, four of them were downhill uh, okay. to work on moving even faster. So, yeah, I got my work in this morning and got to the grocery store, made, made a few things happen. Yeah, no, I didn't. Uh, I did some sit-ups this morning and got a cramp. <laughs> I, was like, I, was like, I was talking to Chef Rock earlier, and I was like, man, I just got I a cramp, bro. It was crazy, yeah, I, dude. So I feel um, your pain. I got I'm a cramp try- just listening to you. <laughs> I, I tried my best to, while I'm inside to try to get some exercise in and try to do a little workout. You know, I'm not doing much. I'm trying to stay indoors. I met one of those high risk people, you know what I'm saying? So I had a little high blood pressure. So I try to stay That's, inside, you know, yeah. but um but I'm getting a little workout in. I'm doing I'm doing okay. I'm not doing what you did. If I did what That's you good. did, I'd be in the hospital. <laughs> what about what about you, Chef Rod? That's right. Yeah, you know, I I I've been doing a lot of cooking. So, you know, coming up with some new di- ideas, trying to create some new gigs. I got yeah. a couple I got a new gig this week uh, that starts in May. Uh a Zoom, a Zoom cooking show. Basically okay, uh, awesome. like an hour long for a private company, big, big company, but private that just okay. came about. Uh, that'll be fun. Uh, be able Congrats, to reach out yeah. to the people. Yeah. I know. You know, uh, I'm actually doing another cool show with a friend of mine where I send him the, a list of ingredients. He goes shopping. He's on the East coast and I'm on the West coast. And then I get on the phone, we call it one 800 chef. And then he actually follows my instructions over the phone verbally and he's creating the dish and he's not a cook. And, and it, we'll see what happens. It'll, it'll be hilarious. And, and then I'm he's going to try to figure out. And he won't. Is, he won't know what I'm, the recipe is until I tell is, him. Is he recording cool. this at the same time? Oh yeah, yeah. We're going to be shooting it for a regular show for uh, live. Awesome. Uh, it'll actually be live on Instagram. I'll let you guys uh-huh. know when. We're talking about starting next week, so that'd be pretty cool. Please do an experience. Okay. IGTV. Woo. Oh yeah, beautiful baby. Other All than right. that, just hanging out. You know, gaining well, weight. Good, man. <laughs> well, I can't wait to get back in the studio with you guys and 
and see each other, see see you guys and talk to you guys face to face. But uh, but this has been a good experience. For we got some guests on. We, got, we had a good guest, Man Nanu, last week, and that was great. Week we have we have uh, one of the best. I mean, just say one of the best rugby players, NFL player. So I'll let Nate uh, go ahead and, and uh, introduce the boy. Yeah, yeah. So today, pretty excited to have uh, Nate Ebner. Nate Ebner is nice. on the show. There he is. Here we go. The man What's up, himself. Nate? All right. Doing, time, What's up, three-time guys? Super Bowl champion, uh, 2016 Olympian. And wow. uh, everybody's going to get to know a little bit more about Ebner's uh, upbringing with rugby. Wow. And I'm excited nice. to hear about it. Nate, how you doing, man? You, you good? I'm good, bro. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. You been working good out team. or what? Bro, every day. You know that. It's, it's, part of the, uh, it's part of the blood. It's not just uh, you hey. know, a show here. We'll, we'll get back to that later. We'll get back yeah. to that. You're obviously uh, not doing very much upkeep with your hair and stuff, but that's for another <laughs> time as well. <laughs> No, at least I, wow. got stuff. I don't got that military cut like you, you know. I gotta work hard. <laughs> I'm trying. Still, to I see you still working on that beard, though. Uh, yeah, yeah. For a long time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Well, hey Nate, we're excited to have you on, man. And uh, to not waste time, just want to get um, started on like what we were kind of chatting about, and I I don't think most people understand. Um, how it goes growing up in, in a rugby community or having rugby introduce you as a kid. And uh, we spoke about it. I, I grew up, my dad played when I was two years old. I was at games on Saturdays, running around with a rugby ball, yeah. um, got taught at a young age. Um, and, uh, you know, that's something that you shared yeah. with your dad as well growing yeah. up. So I just wanted to touch on some of that. And then obviously uh, I wanted to hear about kind of more about like being at the Junior World Cups. That's something that you did um, right, way before, right. obviously uh, being a walk-on yeah. at Ohio State and getting your way into the NFL. Okay. And also the, the, <laughs> yeah. Then also the first uh, CRC, which mm-hmm. I, got some, I got some points on that. But yeah, um, go ahead and talk to me just a little bit about you know, your dad, your dad's impact and your introduction to rugby. Yeah, man. Uh, from the beginning, I was, I was on a rugby field, you know, I remember, um, I kind of briefly talked to you about how I'm in the process of writing a book, which will probably come out in a year or so. We can talk more about that later, but, uh, you know, throughout that process, I kind of was talking to my mom about, you know, when was the first time you really remember me being around? And she was like, you know, your dad used to bring, I used to bring you to your dad's games uh, in an actual, in a, in a carrier. So, you know, I would, I'd sit on the, I'd sit on the sidelines of the games and in a carrier, um, you know, before I can even really remember, but I do know uh, six, seven years old, I'd, I'd be out there with them uh, throwing the ball around. Uh, They'd play a little like kids touch games at halftime and stuff. So, you know, it's a, it's a very underground world especially back in the nineties when I was, and when I was out there doing it and uh, you know, it, all those guys uh, part of that rugby team treated me like I was a, an extension of their family. And uh, it was a very special group to be around and uh, just the, the whole, you know, aura of the entire thing outside of just the, the rugby and learning the game, but the people you're around and, and the quality of people you're around that care about one another. I mean, it was a very, unique brotherhood that uh, I don't want to say I took it for granted, but I didn't really realize how special it was until I got out into the world and you experience different groups and whatnot. And, and the, the genuineness, if you will, of uh, the rugby community is something special. And that's something I'll always remember about it from the, right. from even the beginning days when I was a kid. Right. And I, I feel like I have the, I have very similar experience with that. And it's kind of funny um, thinking about like our dad's, um, my dad picked up the game after college, and uh, Nate's dad was actually a University of Minnesota rugby player. So, oh, wow. you know, he yeah. I followed in his footsteps and played at the University of Minnesota. But um, our dads probably at one point or another crossed paths actually being both from the Midwest. Our dads oh, yeah. probably would have played against each other. Or my dad was talking about um, in the 80s a bunch of guys that he would have known that played against Columbus, which is a team that – Nate yeah. Ebner's his, his dad was playing for you know so um it's Sciota pretty Valley Scioto Valley rugby rugby club. yeah Scioto Valley okay yeah. yeah so my dad was playing Minneapolis rugby 
-hmm. And he, I go, hey, did you play against Columbus? He goes, I didn't play against Columbus, but I played against Scioto Valley all the time. That's so, that Scioto Valley is the Columbus team. So, so, yeah. so here, here we are, our dads playing against each other, you know, yeah. and lo and behold, just kind of that's what the rugby community is, is very tight knit. Um, it's special. You ask one person about rugby, and then you find a way to know someone else to a degree. Yeah. Um, and uh, so another on that on that note, yeah. though, man, when my dad passed, the amount of random messages I got from people who knew him in the rugby community, I, I couldn't even put a figure to it. Um, obviously, the people who knew me directly reached out to me, but the amount of people that like came out of the woodworks that knew my dad just through rugby that felt the need to say something and obviously uh, gave me some nice words, but uh, you know, that just shows the type of people that uh, you're, you're dealing with. And um, like I like speaking to the, the group that you're a part of, I mean, just quality people, man. And I want to get into, before we move on to other topics, I want to get into your college rugby. Um, okay. So by the time you get to college, you're already kind of on the, uh, the the USA path correct like you had already yeah. been uh, I, I went so the or? way it worked for me was uh, at 16 I went to my first developmental camp with Salty Thompson down in Arizona um, that was supposed to be for me I think a developmental camp that I would kind of work my way into the squad but I actually made the U19 team to go to Dubai in 2006 and play in that Junior World Cup. Um, I didn't play a lot, but I was the youngest player in the entire tournament. Um, just just turned 17, I think, when the tournament started. Um, but that was really my first exposure. And just just practicing with the, the guys, I mean, just the experience of the, the, the camp, if you will, prior to the World Cup, um, training with those guys got me so much better. James Patterson, I don't know if you know the name James Patterson, but uh, he was one I really learned from. He played outside center. I was kind of playing fullback at the time. I uh, learned so much from him. But, um, yeah, I'd say 16 was when I first kind of got exposed to Salty in the, in the under-19s. I then, was a junior then, in high school. And then senior in high school, I did the, the second stint of the U19s in Ireland, which was 2007. And then we actually did really well in that Junior World Cup to get promoted to the A pool. So then, and then they changed the, the under 19s, the under 20s. And I actually got to go to the under 20s. So I was a freshman in college through that transition um, from high school to, to college. I, I went to Ohio State. And um, then I got my freshman Ohio year, State. I was a, a freshman All American in the fall and then got to go to that, that final U 20 Junior World Cup. And um, who did uh to Wales? Ohio State's uh, uh, nationals got cut short by somebody. Who did you guys? You guys ended up taking an L to University of Minnesota. That, that yeah, season. it was a uh, it was a good game, you know. I actually, yeah. hey, so so I got a story for that. I was, I was at that game. I wasn't in college yet. My older brother played, and he was uh, he was playing fly half. <laughs> Yo, I was working out there eating that day. I don't know if you remember that day, but I really let me, was. Let me get to it. You took the L, but he took <laughs> he took a loss, but I was there. And uh, I actually remember watching Nate because he had like two or three tries at fullback. I think University of Minnesota ended up winning like high scoring game, like 40. Yeah, it was close. They won by, y'all won by like one or two tries, but I was actually playing uh, fly half there because at Ohio State, I played fly half um, just because. You know, by the, at that level, like to get it all the way to the fullback, it was harder to. Yeah, do. you you like, want to put your best your best players at the positions where they're going to touch the ball all the time, you know. Right, and but no, that was a that was a one of the the funner tournaments that I've ever played in. Uh, it was a freaking hike from Columbus, Ohio, but we got sure. out there and it was in Iowa. Yeah, it was it was a blast though, man. It was a blast. Mm. I remember hitting a drop goal in the in the middle of one game because we got advantage. And I just was like, screw it. Let's just see if this works, you know. And I, and I ate it. And, uh, that was the, you know, go the ahead, only CJ. one I ever had in the game. Nate, you were talking about when, you're, um, when your father passed, you had a lot of people kind of sent you, sent you obviously, well wishes and stuff because the mm -hmm. rugby community is a very tight-knit community. Now, so is not that Ohio State Buckeye community. That's right. A tight community. And I want to say I was born and raised in Springfield. And I'm, okay. Ohio, I'm, I'm, I'm a Buckeye through and through. But I will say this. I always wanted to play at Ohio State, never had the courage. Well, I, I, I played – I was a great football player in high school. 
I never yeah. got letters. Got letters from everybody except Ohio State, but you yeah, walked on to Ohio State. What was right. that experience like walking on? Because if I knew that, I, I could really walk on and be a, an impact player, I would have done it. So how was that for you? What, what was that experience like? Oh, the walk-on experience at Ohio State, man, that's – that was uh that was a big that was big for me because kind of as Nate was alluding to, you know I didn't play football in high school. Um, I was playing on the junior national team and I was trying to kind of pave myself a, a little career here in rugby. But um, you know whether you want to talk about why my decision to play football, we you know we can get into that if you want to. But you know I decided to walk onto the football team and. Um, you know, it was – I will say that walk on to Ohio State when I finally made the team and kind of got involved in football, it was probably the most humbling thing I've ever done wow. because athletically I was capable. Like yeah. I could run fast and I was strong and all that, but I just didn't know anything about football, man. I grew up my whole life playing rugby, and then they start talking about all these different formations the offense is in and the different packages the defense is in and I'm like what's yeah. cover two cover one like, <laughs> I didn't know any of it so I had a lot to learn um right. and that was probably the hardest part for me but you know that happened right after my dad had passed um right. you know the the last conversation I actually had with my dad was about me wanting to walk onto the football team right and uh after that happened you know and then he passed I kind of you know, I was very convicted to make that that conversation become a reality. And um, I had a lot of tunnel vision during that time in my life. Um, you know, nothing was kind of going to really stop me. And uh, I didn't really talk to anybody. Um, but Just it was, uh, you know, it was, it was definitely a grind. And I'm, I'm thankful for the brotherhood because at a time in my life when I needed something to lean on and something to dig into and something – to wake up every day and light a fire under my ass and make me feel something. Uh, Ohio State football was there for me and, and those brothers were there for me. So I, I can't be more thankful. Obviously, what a great platform for me to get to the NFL as well. So Right. No, absolutely. Um, you know, one of the things about Midwest sports and, and East Coast sports, people take it really, really seriously. And oh, they yeah. connect, they're connected to each other. I'm, I'm, I live in the West Coast now. And out here in San Diego, man, people add, it's not a big deal. But yeah. there, it's, the whole town comes out. From high school football games, high school oh, basketball yeah. games, and oh, uh, yeah. take it seriously. So that brother, that brotherhood at Ohio State is special, man. So uh, oh, it even is. though I never, I never played there, I, I the Buckeyes are everywhere, man. The Buckeyes yeah. are everywhere. It's good to see a Springfield native, though. Yeah, I, I was born and yeah. raised there, man. And I left, I left there when I was uh, my mother, my grandmother passed away, and so my mom wanted to get out of town, and so she came out to San Diego with a friend, and, and then I left my senior year in high school, and, and it was okay. t- trust me, I tell you, a different experience whole different experience when you come to I'm California. Sure. Football I'm was sure. totally different. You know, everything was different. And I, I knew I was the best player at Mel Miguel High School in that football team. But the problem was that everybody the coaches had their their players that wanted to play. So I, I, I kinda did focus on something else in my life. But uh right. but yeah dude oh, it, man. Uh, but uh, Springfield was a small we'll talk about that after the podcast but definitely man, Springfield was a small little spot man. <laughs> a small little spot man everybody, knew everybody thing, remember, the, remember the junkyard that was downtown like right downtown yeah the junkyard that was Ebner's auto parts so I, I just called I know when I was doing research on you and I, I called my mom and I, and I actually called my my aunt who actually still lives there and, and they know they know the place vividly you know what I'm saying oh, like yeah. relatives actually went there you know what I'm saying yeah, I mean, so yeah, it's, it's, uh, how do you forget a junkyard in the middle of the city? <laughs> <laughs> you don't. But, yeah, you don't. But you know, when I left, I was still. You know, again, I was seventeen years old. But uh, yeah, you know, it's interesting. You ever remember a, I, this? This this is my heart, dude. I, I don't know about you, but there was a place called Schuler's Bakers. You ever eaten there? Hell yeah! Oh Shuler. my god. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I got a friend. I got one of my dad's best buds. He'll send me pictures exactly, of the shoulders, and he won't even get me anything. And he lives down the street. I'm like, Yo, like can you give me a heads up next time. Shoulders oh, is my. number one, bro. Yeah, my, my, I have my relatives send us shoulder do- shoulder donuts and cakes out all the time. Nice. Man. You know, says yeah. the, I mean, wow, ah, moosey grasses. <laughs> that, that explains a lot, Chris, CJ. That's all right, though. I'm cool. I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hey, well, I'm going to keep it going here, and uh, Chef Rock's going to want to dive in here. But, uh, Ebs, I want I want to switch it over to um, kind of a little bit of MLR chat. Um, you know, you're, uh, you're an owner of New England Free Jacks, hence the hoodie, hence holding it down. Um, but – 
I just want to ask, like, you know, the Raptors <laughs> just fell out. The Raptors just left the competition. Um, not specifics in how that looks, but how much sense did it make um, to you to get involved with the MLR and the New England Free Jacks? Yeah, man. I mean, from a from an opportunity standpoint, um, you know, it's obviously anything starting up like that. It, it's it's riskier, I guess you could say. I know you remember pro rugby, right? It had its problems. I mean, I've I've been a part of that stuff since the NA fours. You know, I even played in the NA fours. I know they've been trying to start stuff for a while. So, um, you know, it's always risky f- from that perspective. But for me personally, man, from someone who was participating in the NA fours and something they were trying to start up and, and seeing pro rugby and seeing them just try to kickstart professional rugby in the States. And then, you know, just the journey that I've been on through rugby in the U S and seeing how it's grown from a guy that was driving all over the Midwest to play in seven tournaments in the summers playing with the men. Cause they didn't have kids, you know, leagues. So, my first game was in a B-side men's game at 13. Same. You know, seeing that type of stuff and um, being a part of it to this coming full circle, and now I'm on the other side of it where a league has started, and I, I've been fortunate enough to have um, the ability to be a part of ownership. That's awesome. I mean, I can't really put into words how special that is for me as an opportunity. I mean, I think back to – 19 year old Nate Ebner before I had that conversation with my dad about walking on to the football team and a lot of that was rooted in the fact that I wasn't really sure what direction you know rugby was going to take me in in my life um you know I know I love rugby um it was my first love undoubtedly and it's something I'll always love but at the time did it would it have provided me a career in the United States no, it, it wouldn't have. I mean, that was a big factor in why I started to look at other things and look at football. And, you know, to, to think about it now, 10 years later, as there may be being a Nate Ebner out there right now who grew up playing rugby, well, they can aspire to be a professional rugby player. They can play in the MLR. They can do it right here in the United States where they're bringing some of the best players in the world to come play in this league. And they can really – start something special and kind of make a career for themselves and, and represent the, the, you know, maybe the United States um, on on the national team and, and the sky's the limit there, but they have that platform now and to be a part of it and see that whole process. um, It's really special, man. And I'm, I'm very thankful to be a part of it. And hopefully I can take some of the experiences that I've learned in the NFL um, being a part of that for nearly a decade now and uh, help apply that to what we're trying to do and, and make a league that sticks. And, and you, even, you even brought a follower along, uh, Patrick Chung. That's right. Very, That's very right. solid free safety for That's the Patriots. That's right. No. Oh, he's a beast on the football field. He, uh, no, nah, man, yeah. I, I would, I'd watch you guys. I'd watch you guys. Yeah, we got to teach him rugby, though. I don't know yeah. about that. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. A- <laughs> I'll, I'll be like, we'll play. I, I was telling we'll play a game. I'll play a fly half, and you just play center next to me, and then I'll just tell you what to do the whole time, and, we'll, and I'll give you the ball. You can rock. Just we'll try, it out, try it out on the sale to Valley's freaking B-side. Just uh, you, uh, we're, we'll be A-side, dog. We'll be A-side. Give me two weeks. We'll be A-side. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, but no, he uh, – Man, when I would watch the Sevens boys in their tournaments, a lot of back when you like you were out there running around, um, you know, I'd sit in my locker and I'd watch you guys, uh, especially on Saturdays because you guys would be playing on Saturdays and we'd be in meetings all day, Seven, yeah. uh, getting ready for a Sunday game. So I, I'd, a lot of times I'd just sit there on my in my locker and Pat's locker is right next to mine, and I'd just be sitting there watching rugby and he was always into it. And then like this past fall, we had you know the World Cup. Uh, I was in there watching it, and he was just – we're on the bus to go to an away game. He's sitting right next to me watching, oh, what was that? What was that? Like, he really liked it, you know. And, um, it, you know, aside from liking rugby as a fan, it was it was a good opportunity for both of us, especially when you consider New England and our involvement in that community. Um, and, and it just made a lot of sense, you know. So, got him along. I brought him along. Mm. Need that. Chef, what's Need up, that. man? Hey, Nate, I got a, the other Nate. 
Uh, yeah, big Nate. I'm big Nate. You're big Nate, little Nate. Okay, big let's get Nate, that shit. Let's, let's get that Nate straight squared. right now. I, I just want to say before he starts, I know where yeah. your questions are going to go. No, I'm you a, don't. I, I'm a Bingo's fan all the way through and through, just so you know. I was oh, born wow. Ready, so okay. I'm just, just letting you know. Hey, hey Nate. <laughs> CJ's right. I, I, I've been a diehard <laughs> Patriot fan since I was a little kid. Yeah. From the Steve uh, Grogan days. Uh, I've been to many games at the old stadium, you know, the oh, aluminum okay. seats. Foxborough Stadium, yeah. Uh, I'm from Connecticut. Uh, grew, I went to college at Johnson & Wales. I'm a chef uh, in Providence, so we go up every Sunday. When You're a chef? A game. I'm a no chef. Way. Chef Rock. That's right. <laughs> nice, nice. So here, here's what's cool about it. Growing up as a kid, I, I grew up football. My uncle, Uncle Carmen, and Uncle Frank would take us out when we were little kids and run drills in the yard. Right. With all my cousins, we'd have, and they'd watch us. That's where I broke my nose the first time out of four. It was in yeah. his backyard, <laughs> running with the ball, with my head down, <laughs> and looking up, and my cousins right there, boom, boom, all over the place. So we grew up uh, that way, and then one of my cousins actually uh, did very, very, very well in the uh, NFL. Uh, my cousin's uh, Eric Mangini. Yeah, Mangini. oh yeah, oh yeah. A little before your time, Nate. Uh, no, no. But we grew up football. That's all we did. We lived it. We played it. I played through high school. But in culinary school, there wasn't any uh, any football. Although we used to we used to scrimmage against uh, Brown University's JV and kick their ass. But that you know we we go over there. All all the guys. Our front line was huge. Every guy was right. over four. You know all these big chefs. Right. Uh, so we, we, we lived it and we enjoyed it. I, I, I want one question, and I really admire the fact that you, you're a two-sport guy. Is there a question in there? Hell yeah. I wasn't sure. It's coming. You mind your hey, business. We're learning the requirements of being a chef. Yeah, right. hey, you got four minutes. <laughs> no, so in 2016, one day after you signed your two-year extension, the team released you to play for the Olympics, which, I mean, we touched on. Just from the from the Patriots end, because I had met Pelichek and through Eric being there for you know those years and winning three rings, yeah. like you've won three Super Bowl rings, which is incredible. Uh, the, 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 what were the politics on that? I mean, I, all I could think of, and the reason I'm asking is because I just watched all five seasons of Ballers, yeah. in like two days. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, it brought Stop up all show. these questions about uh, you know. Uh, I tried to watch that first. Getting injured. I, I tried to watch the first episode of that show, and I was just yeah. like, "Dude, this is." Oh no, you would have hated it. I just had to like. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sure like, guys who actually played probably um, wouldn't like it. But was no, there man. a lot of politics? Like, uh, what happens you if you know, get hurt? That was an interesting um, situation because. You know, and Nate could probably speak to this too, but the, uh, you know, that the Olympics was announced that it, or they would be playing the Olympics in, in 2012, right, Nate? Yep. Right. And um, then you had to qualify in 14, right? So yep. in my so career was in the end, was it 14, right? It was the season of 2014, but we actually qualified in 2015 because we didn't get okay. top four. So, 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 2012, I'm drafted to the Patriots, and you know, NFL stands for not for long. So I, you know, <laughs> I don't know how long I'm going to be there. And I see that we've qualified for the Olympics, and you know, then in 2014, 15, as Nate said, we did qualify. Um, and undoubtedly we would be participating in the 2016 Olympics. And when I think about my entire life, playing rugby my whole life, uh, you know, what rugby means to my relationship with my, my father, um, you know, just everything that rugby embodies. And then when I think about rugby not being in the Olympics since 1924, was that right? Yep. And now it is in – 2016 and all that time has passed and I just happen to be here in this moment right at this time when I'm in my athletic peak if you will to not only be able to participate in that Olympics because I'm athletically capable but also because I have the understanding of rugby because I grew up my whole life playing the sport you know what I'm saying so all those things that culminate to to you know brew right at that moment I'm not really one that believes in fate but that kind of makes me believe in in and fate right. a little bit because I felt I had to do that. And, 
you know, as you said, you know, Bill released me to go play or to, you know, be in the Olympics, but Nate can speak to this too. I, there was, when I first got there, it was 50, 50, it was rough sailing. Like I had a lot to get back into things. Like it took me a minute to get it back. We had a and, talented team too, you know, like, yeah, we, very, we very playing good well. Team. We had a lot of, a lot of promise, you know? Right. And I had my own shit to worry about getting myself <laughs> ready. Not, you know, in shape, just kind of get it all, get it all back. But, and I had to do it in a short amount of time and there was no guarantee that, you know, I would even make that team. I was just lucky. Mike gave me a chance to come into camp with the guys and let me work. And luckily, I you know, I, I found found a way. I kind of came on late in, in the summer. I started hitting on. But, mm-hmm. you know, my point to that is Bill didn't know if I'd make it or not. And, you know, I was so convicted in that decision that that had been building for years. I mean, I, I knew about it. The in seed was planted. Well, the yeah, I mean, planted. Yeah, I'd be. I remember years before that summer, I, I'd be sitting in meetings and I would just be thinking about playing rugby, and I just oh. couldn't help it. Everything in my core was pulling me to rugby and wanting to play. And when that free agency came around, you know, we we got the contract done, and then I said, Bill, look, like, you know, I want to play rugby in the Olympics, you know. Uh, I, I, I have to do it. It's something I have to do. Like, how can we, how can we make it work? Um, and it wasn't really a big conversation, you know, Bill right off the bat, uh, was pretty much with it. He did end up calling me back and saying, Hey, we're going to have to put something in your contract. You know, it's not like you're going sailing, Um, (laughs) but, uh, I do remember him saying that, but you know, to be honest with you, I was so convicted that if, if he had said no or whatever the case may have been, then I was willing to, you know, come back after the Olympics and try to sign a one-year minimum and, and just do something along those lines. Really? But oh. There was no question in my mind that I was going to do that because I just felt so compelled to. And, you know, I, I'm one to live without regret, and I didn't want to wake up you know, in the, in the fall going into the next football season, thinking about what it could have been, like, been, you know, yeah. and so well, I had to do it and I'm glad I did. I, th- I think That's it good, definitely speaks to your character, Nate, and sure like um, how people know you. And uh, on the surface, you know, like we would see posts up of Bill Belichick having like the Ebner, yeah, yeah, the shirt uh, on. The Ebner Olympics yeah. shirt on, like, you know, supporting USA rugby and stuff. Like, that was all yeah. really cool to see just because, you know, regardless of what you just said there, there are questions like, well, did he really support it or not? But to me, it, on the surface, man, it looked like because of who you are, everybody was like, yo, let this dude have a crack. And mm-hmm. correct me if I'm wrong, you're the only person from the NFL to go to the Olympics? No, I, that's a short list. But I'm the and there's an even shorter list that has, we need to get you a damn medal. Then I'm gonna huh? tell you. I'm gonna tell you. Right <laughs> That's now. what we needed to do. <laughs> and then there's there's it's only like two other people who've actually or one other person I think it's Bob Hayes that have been in the Olympics as an active as they've Player. been active in the NFL. Wow. But nobody's wow. been in the Olympics and then won a Super Bowl in the same year. Except for that's, me. So I got that one. Toot, toot. Admire you for that. Toot, all right. Toot. Take that one, yeah. He's it took a lot of, yeah. That sounds cool and all, but you know how many people it takes to be involved in something like that where you win an Olymp- like you win a Super Bowl and you're part of an Olympics? I mean, so many other people. I mean, that's what I'm saying about fate. Like, it's crazy how that culminated. I mean, so many things have to go right. You know, you could get hurt one moment and now all that goes away. So, you know, it was a special. It was a special year for me. That's good. Your job, Thanks. Nate. Nate, you've always excelled as well. You got named second team all pro um, as a specialist, right, in the NFL. Yeah. It, it's one of those things. I mean, I could, I could ask Nate to unclog my drain, and he'll do it 110%. You will, oh, dude. My wife's, my wife's got me doing everything. I'm a carpenter. I'm a painter. <laughs> exactly. I'm everything right now. Bro. And so I wanted, to, I wanted to dive into that and, and share. So you and me going into the Olympics, there was uh, – a guy that was with the Patriots at one point, Dom Rosso. I sent you a message. I don't know if you saw it just recently. <laughs> I probably did it. I probably didn't. Um, but this guy, this guy was on the team, right? And he was kind of a, well, a, he, a defensive he, he, line hand combat. Yeah, also, they brought him in to just kind of be a hand fighting specialist because 
you know, there's so much hand fighting in football, mainly yeah. on the defensive line and offensive line. But, um, yeah, he would come in and he was a Navy SEAL and he would teach guys, you know, how to, you know, do stuff. <laughs> really? Violent so, oh, dude, I never yeah. heard that. That's so this dude, stuff. he's like super, super energetic. And yeah, like yeah. Nate, <laughs> Nate got to meet him and, and we started sharing videos of, this guy and he's awesome and he teaches like home self defense all this stuff but his thing is crush everything yeah, so it's like really. mindset mindset you're going in to do your workout he shows videos of himself working out it's like, like crush it don't leave yeah. anything yeah he's yeah. just intensely wow. intensely focused and committed right and then there's other people that i feel like me and Nate share kind of like a similar uh uh mindset and attraction to certain people so you know, David Gobbins, a guy who's been on Joe Rogan's podcast, dude who's a Navy SEAL, lost, was yeah. 300 pounds, had to lose weight. It's got this amazing story. But, like, he even posted a video today where he's just like, stop being, feeling bad for yourself. And he just gets super, yeah. super <laughs> focused on just, like, if you want to achieve something, achieve it. You know what I mean? And, no excuses. Uh, yeah. And we were just talking earlier, actually, about our strength and conditioning coaches at, at – at the moment or guys that we're close to my current one, Jason Huntley from San Diego Legion. He is so, so good at the mental side of engaging in a way that you're actually pushing yourself to peak performance and to, and to be clear. And those things, I don't know. It's like a big dog mentality sort of thing. And I feel like yeah. we used it to was like, a, it's like what gym. I said, what I said to you the other day, I was like, we all got our Don Rosso somewhere. We all got one. <laughs> For sure. You know, For sure. I got one at, I got one from Ohio state. I still stay close, close with, you'll know the name, my man, uh, mm -hmm. Anthony Schlegel. He was yeah. the, uh, one of the linebackers with AJ Hawk and Bobby Carpenter, the, the right. trio there. But a, uh, Anthony is just a most energetic person I've ever met. Just positive, just spewing out of him. And, uh, you know, he's, he's my Dom Rasa, man. He, uh, I love working out with him cause he's just juice all the time. And, um, that, that mindset is, is everything, you know, you speak to you, all the little things you'd have me do, Nada, you know, plumb, plumb your toilet, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> the new toilet in the other day. Yeah. I, I say. You, you really can't. I mean, that, that comes from my dad though, man. I gotta be honest. Like I grew up in a junkyard, blue collar as it gets but not really something I really recognized, you know, it right. wasn't like we cared, um, you know, but we would never have anybody do anything for us. Uh, it was always, we can do it ourselves. Why pay somebody to do something that we can right. do? If they can do it, why can't we do it? You know, right. it was just, right. that's how everything was. And that's, that's kind of the mindset about. I took when, you know, I walked on at Ohio state and at Ohio state, and I'll leave you with this, but at Ohio state, they have the gold pants, right? When you beat right. Michigan. And you get, oh, a pair of, yes. you, get a, you get a pair of gold pants if you beat Michigan. And the reason that started as a tradition is because the coach who started that tradition said, you know, the Michigan players, they put their pants on one leg at a time, just like you do. Right. And that's kind of how that started. And when I walked on at Ohio State, I didn't know about that. But I had that same mentality. You know, these guys are all five-star recruits. This is like the number one football school in the country. Blah, 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 blah. But I'm sitting here like, man, you know, they put their pants on the same way I do every day. Like, if they're out here doing it, I can do it. It's all about the work I'm willing to put forth, and I'm willing to die every day that I'm here. Yeah. So, and, those, and those are the those are the dudes that I want on my team, uh, yeah. you know? And, that, and that's the mentality that, as American rugby players, we have to have, especially the ones who put on the shirt, and whether it's 15s or 7s, one who are putting on the USA shirt. That's the mentality we have as a tier two country, right? Mm -hmm. And it's got, and it's got to be that. And I just love that about Nate. We share mm -hmm. that saying. We share that mentality, man. Like I, I just, I remember growing up, you know, going back. I, I couldn't wait on anyone to help me train for where I wanted to go with my rugby career. When I was in college, when I was in high school, you know, like I, I thankfully had an older brother that I could turn to, and we'd go do skills and whatever. Or, I'd, I'd always try and find somebody, but man, just like the determination that you needed uh, to just go out and get the work in, it's, it's just a mindset, at a, man. At a young I, age, it, it's undoubtedly a mindset that you speak about, but uh, it's a lonely road sometimes, you know, and you got to be fine with that. 
you know, at the end of the day, as an adult, I can say, I can look at myself in the mirror and be proud of who I am because of the work that I'm willing to put in, that I've put in, that I'm willing to continue to put in um, because of the mindset that I have. But yeah, as a young kid, if you want something, um, you know, I can't tell you the amount of times I drive a bag of balls out to a random field and just kick at a tree right. to try to, you know, by myself. And then I'd have to shag the balls and go do it again just to, so I could get better at kicking and all those things. It's just like, it's a lonely road and you really do find out like what separates you from other people. And, and then you can really attest to why you are getting better than other people. You can attest, it's because of the work I put in, you know, and you can see it. It's and, interesting you, you, talk, you talk about that. I'm sorry. Is that it, when I was growing up in Ohio, and, and it's that work, it's that working class mentality. And blue and collar you, all day, yeah, baby. Blue, co- blue collar it all day. And it's about, it's about, it's a, really, it's about people not having a lot and, and wanting to achieve. And a lot of people dreaming about leaving. In order to leave, you have to be better. You right. have to be good. You know what I'm saying? You can't be secondary because secondary people come right back home to Springfield right. and, and and amount to nothing. So that's one that my, my mama always taught me all the time. You know, this, you're going to be the best at what you're going to do. You're going to do something, be the best at it, or you're going to work hard at it. You know, so and I learned at an early age to be every sport I play, work really hard. You know what I'm saying? Right. So again, I get that mentality you got. I really it, it I makes really you, it. it makes you genuinely yeah. find out about yourself, how yeah. you feel about the journey, yeah. how you feel about the work every day. You know, it's people talk a lot, but. Um, you know, people talk about even go. college football players that want to play in the NFL. They think they want to play in the NFL, but that, this is a full-time job now. Son. It ain't, you don't get to go yeah. to class half the day and then come in here. And you come to a place like New England where we were working. Competitive. Yeah. Or, you know, like um, that's – that you, you find out about yourself if you're really about the work every day. You know, the people that made it out in New England for five-plus years – I have a, just a different level of respect because I know what I went through for, for eight of them and I know what they had to endure to make it that long. It, and not a lot of people do. And I, you know, you, you just find out about yourself through the work and um, you know, it, like I said, it can be a lonely road, but uh, it's worth it. If you can do it, if you can create that mindset to do it every day and better yourself, man. No hey, Nate, got a question for you. Um, you're going to the giants. I am going to the giants. <sighs> Big blue, I'll still, big blue, dude, big I'll still, <laughs> I'll still follow you, brother. Yeah, but, I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> you know, thank I mean, <laughs> hey, you know you what? Know when what? when Eric became head, of the list. I know. Well, when my cousin became head coach for the Jets, yeah, I became a Jet fan. You know, different, wow. audi- different audience in there. I remember going wow. to the first game. I mean, the Giants is one thing, but the Jets. <laughs> are Jets. Yeah. Oh my God! If you're a New England fan. Oh my! Uh, uh, you let me tell you. Like, don't broadcast this <laughs> podcast to the East Coast. <laughs> it, it was a freaking eye opener. I remember going there with my mom and my brother Dave and, and my my sisters Lydia and Maria. And we're there, and there's a guy next to us, one of those diehard Jet fans, and he's oh, yeah. talking and yelling the whole freaking game. <laughs> my mom, and he's swearing, you know, G, E, T, you know, like the, the right, fireman. Yeah. And my mom just looked at him, and she goes, will you shut the hell up? I'm <laughs> trying to watch the game. And we're in the stands, and it's all Jet fans around us. And the guy didn't know what to say. You know, my mom's yeah. 80 years old, you know. And, and, <laughs> and he just looked at her. And, and then he said, my, my nephew is the coach. Don't make me go down there and get him. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> oh, man. The guy funny. shut up the rest of the game. But I'll tell you what, it was like I felt a little endangered. Okay, I better be yeah. a Jet fan. Yeah. That's Ty crazy. Hard, year. What a crazy. flip-flop from New oh, England to uh, New hey, York. Blood, blood no, man, I'm excited, water. I'm excited about going to the Giants, man. You should. That they is have true. long juice. You know, yeah, I've so. spent eight years – uh, with the same franchise, I'm very thankful and it, I'm fortunate I've made it last that long. And, you know, free agency has come up a couple of times, but it hasn't turned out that I've left. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm excited that, you know, I'm thankful, but I'm excited about a new opportunity. And um, I'm, just, I'm just ready to get going. I'm kind of um, – this, this sucks that we're all did stuck you, at home right now. Did I'm ready you leave, to get, get did you leave because work. Tom – did you leave because Tom left? That's the real reason. <laughs> nah. Is that the I, uh, I, I wish I wish we had it that way where it was that easy. I could just yeah. say, "Oh, this player's not here. I'm gonna leave too." But uh, still, Tom, Tom got ghosts. So you said you gotta leave too. 
<laughs> no, man, it's, you know, we all got, we all got to make what the best decision for ourselves. And, and, you know, like I said, every, every year free agency comes up and there's thousands of transactions and new players on new teams. I mean, it's, it's nothing new, yeah, it's but not every like year we talk about it like it is. And, you know, but each time in each player's career, they got to make the best decision for themselves and what's best for them and their family and their career. And, yeah. um, you know, it just so happens me and Tom at the same time we're up and that we're both deciding to leave, but it's, uh, you know, individually just a decision you got to make and you got to make the best move for yourself. Like, like the teams do to the players. I mean, they make the best decision for them too. So right. It's hard feelings. See, it's a business. CJ, we got, we got, we got time for one more, right? Like I, I can, yeah. I can get into this guy here. Uh, yeah. So, so the, you know, speaking on the rugby community and stuff, it's, it's awesome because there's, you know, I've said on the show before, there's, you can play rugby until you can't play rugby anymore. Like you can find a team, you can find a level that you can play at. Yeah. And uh, not to put you on the spot or, but out of uh, interest, you know, maybe a couple more years in the NFL, uh, potentially do you see yourself uh, trying to play in the MLR or, or, playing some rugby as like oh, a couple years at the back end of your career. I always say to people when the off season comes, a lot of guys go play basketball because, you know, that that's what they do. They play pickup basketball. Well, I play rugby because that's what I do. It's like pickup rugby games, touch games, whatever. I was out in San Diego training with the sevens boys because, you know, I was going to see what was going to happen with me in free agency. And uh, I wanted to be prepared if the Olympics came around. But obviously things have settled down. But, um, no, man, rugby's not going anywhere. It's my, uh, it's my pickup basketball. It's my first That's love. Right. It's yeah. something that will always be a part of my life. And I will always play. But at what capacity that is, I can't tell you. Um, if it's in, in a World Cup, or an Olympics or with Scioto Valley's B-side in Columbus on a Saturday afternoon or, you know, that's what it is. But I will yeah. be around playing. Uh, I can't promise I will capacity, but it'd be dope if I, I could strap up against uh, the Legion or wherever the hell you're at so I can just you know, <laughs> get my hands on you. How you about to be an owner fun. and a player? Hey, because he was talking. Team vibe. If you do <laughs> see what he was saying, man. There'll be Jews. He'll be stuff. You know what I'm saying? Jews, said, as soon as I hit you, as soon as I hit you, Nate, they'll be like, all right, this dude's for real. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. I'll just pass the ball to someone who's going to score, and then the, we all good, baby. I I'm hitting got... you anyway, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to this conversation, man. I was, I was figuring out Nate was, you know, he was calling you out a couple times there, bro. A couple so, times. You know what I'm saying? So I think you might just want to just practice a pickup game with him. You know? Yeah. I'll, right. I'll, well, or, or we'll be game. – We'll be we'll be old men and we'll go to Aspen and play on the same team together and oh yeah drink beer and knock oh, yeah. out of some other old men. Hey man, it's it's nice. it's our it's our thing and it's it's special that at fifty years old or forty whatever we'll be able to do that. You know there is rugby for uh, an older generation or a middle aged generation or a young generation and at all capacities the young kids to professional leagues and we have it all here in the United States and it's an exciting time for rugby in the U.S. The, we got the Olympics you know talking about trying to get World Cups here I mean it's just all great stuff and uh, you know rugby is a game for everyone um, I'm just I want to expose it to as many people as I possibly can because what the game has given me um, you know I can't even really put into words so I just want to yeah. share that with as many people as possible. And I know you feel the same way about it, bro. It's uh, it's 100%. a great. Nate, Nate, I want to thank you, man, for coming on the show, man. It's been, it's been an eye opener for us and experience. And, and I like seeing Nate, Nate, a Nate, 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 Nate want that small Nate, little Nate. I see little Nate talk to his little Nate. Come on, not little. small Nate. That, that's, <laughs> little, that's, that's, that's little, my bad. Little, little, little Nate, little, I can live little with that. Nate. Enough, hey, hey, enough with those Nate. college. <laughs> small Nate. <laughs> <laughs> enough, <laughs> of his, enough of his college name. <laughs> you, about, you about to wake me up off that? <laughs> Thanks, it's Nate. Good, it's good. It's good to have someone little Nate talk to to someone else in his profession that it gets you going, man. So we'd like to see him. No, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me, bro. Thank you. We'll do You're the that. man. Thank you. Hang out. Thanks, man. Man. We'll talk once we finish recording. We'll still talk. Thanks, All man. All right, man. Check your inbox, man. Quick tap out. I'm going to check it out. Tap out. Quick tap out.